Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Get ready for taxes. Stay home and stay safe with IRS Online Tools. IR 2020-277, December 16th, 2020, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today encouraged taxpayers to take necessary actions now to help file federal tax returns timely and accurately in 2021. So, of course, the 2020 tax year is going to be ending here. we got tax season coming up. 2020 taxes then being filed in the tax year of 2021. This is the fourth in a series of reminders to help taxpayers get ready for the upcoming tax filing season. A special page, and there's a link to that special page here, updated and available on irs.gov, irs.gov, outlines t- steps taxpayers can take to make tax filing easier in 2021. With continued social distancing, taxpayers can stay home and stay safe with IRS online tools and resources. There's a link to those online tools and resources that help them find the information they need. These irs.gov tools are easy to use and available 24 hours a day. Millions of people use them to find information about their accounts get answers to tax questions, and file and pay taxes. Free file. Almost everyone can file electronically for free. The IRS free file program, and there's a link to that here, available only through irs.gov or the irs to go app. There's a link to that here. Offers brand name tax preparation software packaged at no cost. So more and more people can get access to free software, software that can then be used to prepare the tax returns. Now, typically when you're thinking about using the software in free software, there's typically going to be an AGI limitation in terms of when you could use the free software on irs.gov. And then you can use the free fillable forms after that point. But the free software will typically be much easier because the software will, of course, guide you in a similar way as proprietary software might such like a TurboTax or an H&R Blocks, giving you an interview process to help you to input the data. The fillable forms, the free fillable forms, then are going to be basically the actual tax forms. We're going to fill out the tax forms kind of more like a box by box uh, fill out. And you can do that, but that's going to be a lot more complex to do. The software, of course, is going to help you to do the data input and then populate Uh, the forms in a lot easier fashion. You also want to make sure that you're taking into consideration your state needs for state income taxes. We are on the IRS website. So more and more, the the software that can be used is more and more accommodating to states. But it's more difficult for software to accommodate the states given the fact that state laws will differ. So state taxes will differ. So you want to make sure when you're doing your taxes that you're picking up software that's going to help you out with the state as well because typically, ideally, You would like to do both of those two things at the same time. Also note that once you get past a certain threshold, then it may be better to actually get maybe possibly proprietary software and and use that software or uh, obviously get a tax professional at some point. When you're looking to the point of getting a tax professional, you probably want them around not only to prepare the taxes, but also to be there in the event of an audit and or for tax planning purposes into the future. So if you're your income is going up uh, above a certain threshold, I would say possibly a good general rule is if you're itemizing, if you file a Schedule A, then your taxes might be complex enough that you want to pay someone (laughs) to help prepare them. And therefore, you don't want to pay someone just to get the taxes done and send them in and never see the person again. You want to build a relationship with them so that if you get a letter from the IRS questioning any component, and or when you do the following tax return in the following year, if you have carryovers or anything like that, then those individuals can help you out uh, going forward on a more long-term basis. So the software does all the work of finding deductions, credits, and exemptions. It's free for those who earned uh, 72000 or less in 2020. So 72000 or less in 2020 can use that software. So you might want to check that out. Some of the free file packages also offer free state uh, tax return preparation. And again, that's a big factor. Depending on your state needs, uh, it would be really nice if whatever software you are using wouldn't just be doing the federal side of things, but also the state side of things. Taxpayers comfortable filing, filling out tax forms electronically can use free file fillable forms. There's a link to that here. Regardless of income to file their tax returns either by mail or online. So if you have over 72000 
then you can use the free file fillable forms for free. But again, that's a bit more complex to do. So that's like, because uh, you're actually doing more data input into the actual tax forms. You do have all the instructions to help you to do that. Uh, but if you're over that income threshold, you might be to the point where you want either proprietary software and or actual advice from a tax preparer. Plus, if you do the free file fillable forms and you have state needs, then that fillable forms typically will not be uh, taking care of your state needs and you're going to have to take care of your state obligations as well in some other way, shape, and or form. So choosing a preparer. The IRS has several options to finding a tax preparer. One resource is choosing a tax preparer a professional. There's a link to choosing a tax professional here, which offers a wealth of information for selecting a tax professional. The Directory of Federal Tax Return Preparers with credentials and selected qualifications, there's a link to that here, can help taxpayers find preparers in their area who currently hold professional credentials recognized by the IRS or who hold an annual filing season program record of completion. Other online help, the Interactive Tax Assistant, there's a link to that here, answers general, general tax questions including helping to determine if a type of income is taxable or if someone is eligible to claim certain credits and deductions. Those are going to be the, the common questions. Obviously, most of your income, if you have a W-2 or 1099, for like interest or something, you know that it's taxable, but there could be questions in terms of things that you're receiving as to whether it's taxable or not. The other big question, of course, are on the deductions and or the credit side of things. Credits can be a little bit more complicated sometimes because there's phase outs and there's going to be refundable credits versus non-refundable credits and whatnot. So you can get more information on those items. Uh, with changes to income and other life events, there's a link to life events here, for many in 2020, uh, tax credits and deductions, there's a link to the credits and deductions, can mean more money in taxpayers' pocket and thinking about eligibility now can help make tax filing uh, easier next year. So if you could do any planning, of course, you want to do the planning before you actually file the tax return because when you actually file the tax return in 2021, you are very restricted in terms of making any changes that would actually have an impact uh, on the taxes at that point. At that point, all you can do is basically do the tax return. So if there's any adjustments that can be made uh, to actually affect the taxes, you got to do that typically in the year that uh, is being covered here, that being uh, 2020 that is currently, of course, winding down. Taxpayers may qualify cr for credits like the child tax credit. There's a link to that here. And the child dependent care credit. There's a link to that here. Taxpayers whose dependent does not qualify for the CTC might be able to claim the credit for other dependents. Individuals paying higher education costs for themselves, a spouse, or a dependent may be eligible to save some money with the education uh, tax credit or deductions. So these are common uh, credits to look into if you're paying tuition for, some, for someone or someone's going to higher education college. Additionally, low to medium income taxpayers may qualify for the earned income credit. So these are the typical kind of credits that people would be looking into. Notice that the earned income credit and the child tax credit are typically what we call refundable credits. So that can be a little bit confusing when you do the tax return, the fact that they have a refundable component. And then obviously, who qualifies for a dependent? If they qualify for a dependent, can you get the child tax credit or can you get the credit for the other dependents? If not, and then if anybody's going to school for higher education within the family, then you're looking into the education credits, the hope and the lifetime learning credits typically there. So beginning in January 2021, the Interactive Tax Assistant will, up, will uh, update it to include answers to more tax law questions. Taxpayers can check the status of their refund using the Where's My Refund tool. There's a link to that here. The status is available 24 hours after the IRS receives their e-file tax return or up to four weeks after they mailed a paper return. The Where's My Refund tool updates once every 24 hours, usually overnight, so taxpayers only need to check once a day. So obviously, uh, many people are, are ex wanting their refund as soon as possible. Uh, you can advise people to, to look at the Where's My Refund tool in order to check that, and obviously the, the tool they're saying refreshes basically once a day, so it doesn't really help to check it you know, every hour or something, maybe once in the morning, once in the evening. Uh, that's the only time it's going to change. So the best and fastest way for taxpayers to get their tax refund is to have a direct deposited. So they're looking to get the direct deposits going, everything. The IRS wants everything to be electronic these days. And obviously the COVID 
uh, pandemic thing has increased what the, has been their push for a long time uh, to make everything as, uh, as electronic as possible. So they're pushing the direct deposit here. Uh, and that would mean that if you get, if you get a refund, then of course, then you might want to do the direct deposit because that would make it faster for them to get the money right into your checking account. If you owe them money, then, uh, you know, maybe you want to write a paper check and put it in the snail mail. You know, <laughs> it takes a little longer to clear, but, but either way, the, either way, they're trying to get the, the wireless stuff and the, and the e-transfers, uh, there, whether you're paying them or receiving, uh, money back. And there's a lot of ways that you can, you can set up the payment methods, but they're looking to get everything uh, electronic here. So taxpayers who don't have a financial account can visit the FDIC website. There's a link to that here for information to help open an account online. For more information about planning ahead, see publication 5348, get ready to file, and publication 5349, year-round tax planning is for everyone. There's a link to those two publications here. There'll be a link to this in the description.